could include your basic and your carvers, your isolation tools for keeping things dry, your materials such as etch and sealant, a bite block to keep them open, bendable brush, articulating paper, and a charge light cure. We're going to start with our etchant and our syringe tip. Make sure you choose the proper tip that allows a good even flow. Make sure you unlock it, and when you put the tip back on, tie in and secure the tip. Make sure to test out your material to make sure that it flows easily. Test it out on a 2x2 two two gauze without securely locking. That's a pretty easy way to ruin your day. Doing the same with the sealant material on putting the tips on. Only difference is selecting a different gauge to allow for a thinner flowable material. Test your sealant material. Sometimes they may have brushes on the tips. Next step is remove plaque and debris by a dry brush method to prepare the tooth for etching. Don't go too crazy though. Trace the sealable grooves to get a good idea on where you're going to be placing the sealant. Provide light isolation to protect the tooth and tissues from etchant during first steps. Next step with tissues retracted, we are going to be applying the etchant for about 20 seconds to the available grooves to make sure proper etching has occurred. Don't be afraid to layer it on there. Work etchant in with Explorer if that is preferred. After 20 second exposure, be sure to vacuum off the etchant from the tooth, leaving a residue and copious amounts of water to rinse the tooth off using air and water spray. Be sure to dry the tooth until frosty in appearance. Be sure to remove isolation and replace with new ones. Also adding a dry angle if preferred and available. The dry angle will look like an arrow pointing towards the throat placed on the Stenson's duct on the side of on the inside of the cheek. One way to apply sealant is to use the syringe and dispense directly onto the tooth, making small streams, not large puddles. Connecting only when necessary. Here's an example of it being extra thick and layered over ridges and excess material placed on the grooves. If left extra thick, dab with a micro brush to remove excess. Be sure to remove till a thin layer is left. Another alternative is to dispense and place with Explorer, drawing into the grooves with as little material as needed. Once proper amount is placed, light cure tooth directly. After proper light curing, ice skate with Explorer to check for voids and bubbles, identifying missing areas. If under cured or overhead light cured, it may clump off. Be sure to floss the contacts to ensure contacts are not locked with sealant material. Example of an extra thick sealant left by or left behind and check with an articulating paper will show blue occlusal marks that need to be carved with a clue and discoid carver or carver of choosing. Be sure to carve down and check with patient to see if any noticeable changes have been made. Carving until patient feels no difference from before sealant was placed. It is normal for occlusal marks from bite paper to be on cusps and ridges. Only carve off marking paper on restoration if left behind. To remove isolation, soak with tons of water so it disconnects from the tissues and remove carefully, being sure to leave nothing behind, such as dry angles or cotton rolls tucked inside the cheek. 